Sun Tzu And the Shogun It's the Shah It's like I did the work of a slave for the perks of a king yeah. Emerging from the surface is a murdering crowd yeah. But perks get knocked uh. Deserve flip flops The worst get stopped But burst the shot yeah. Seen cops perks is Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Don't Sleep on the Couch Podcast. I go by Cash, a.k.a. Exec P. Uh, this week, we got another artist spotlight, but this time we have an entire record label. Uh, if you don't know Divine Records, you soon will know. Uh, these brothers this year alone have dropped three phenomenal projects, all separate in their own right. One with the theme on black exploitation and KJ. Um, then you have Black Sun Zoo with Ja King, the divine in terms of just continuing on with, if you heard illusions of grandeur and all of the things that that acclaim came with that project, he's just continuing on in that same vein and expanding. And then you got Javi Darko, man, just spilling his pain out on wax. All three of these, these, these projects have a similar theme. It's, it's, it's musical movies, man. It's musical movies. And that, that's really all I can say, man. I'm a fan of these guys from Atlanta. Long Island, and, you know, home to me is Brooklyn, New York. You know, Harley home always repping, you know what I mean? But without further ado, I'd like to introduce to the show, for the first and second, and, you know, first time again for some of them, Divine Records. Peace, man. Peace, man. Peace. How you doing, God? Oh, I'm like good, man. I'm good. Happy like to be it. here. Bless. Right out. <laughs> for right. sure, for sure. Hey, man, um, you know, before we get into everything and, you know, some some people know you, some may not, some may be watching you guys for the first time. So can you give them a little bit about yourselves individually and collectively? All right. Um, you know, my name's KJ. You know, I'm from Atlanta. I'm 27. Um, you know, when I um when I started working with Ja and uh Hobby, you know, I ran up on them through a uh honestly a, a 90s hip hop page. And we started we started working from then. You know what I'm saying? We we started fucking with each other, we tapped in right there. And that's how we started, like, coming together and building the brand, you know. But, yeah, um, other than that, man, you know, um, I'm just, like, I'm trying to, like, re bring something refreshing back to music, you know what I'm saying, with the black exploitation theme, like, black culture and everything. That's really my uh, that's really my style, you know, tapping into my roots. I'm a historian, you know what I'm saying? I like to go back to the past and, and, and bridge the gap between my generation and, you know what I'm saying, the older cats. And what's going on now, you know what I'm saying? So that's sure. that's like that's my calling in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Gorgeous. Absolutely. Uh Javi, what about you? All right, yeah. So what's up? Javi Darko. Um, my aim for a lot of my music is to address a lot of topics that seem to be taboo or a lot of people don't talk about. And I try to have emotion at the forefront at all times. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep it try to keep it raw and as real as possible you know what i'm saying and hopefully my story can alter someone else's word up that's my ultimate goal with this shit all right ja um yeah i feel like what rome said you know bridging the gap in the culture what hobby said bringing emotion and, and at times taboo topics is kind of where i come in and i you know i'm like the middleman of all of it because, you know, not only do I want to be one of the illest MCs ever, you know what I mean, and te technically be, you know, very savvy and shit, but I also want to put the message first, the art first, the touching people and making emotional, cinematic movie shit first. And I think just that's what Divine represent, the left side of hip hop, the right side, and those tweeners, you know what I mean, that, that can give you, that can make it all make sense and make some ill shit. For sure. With with the resurgence of uh, you know, groups like like Griselda, um, and, and just, you know, the the Rock Marcy's and, and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you guys do exactly the same thing, but they I think it's highly publicized that they've made it popular again to to do exactly kinda what you guys are doing is just be authentically themselves and that type of shit shine through. But um, you know, I'm 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 put it out there, I'm forty now at this point, right? What what and a lot of shit in, that's coming out right now, a lot of the drill stuff, and a lot of the, the trendy stuff, but what makes you guys stick to your your guns and, and rap the way you rap? And and you guys are appreciated for that, So, but what makes you do that in this climate? I feel like, um, you know, for me personally, I feel like, you know, just, just knowing what I like, you know, you know, they say make the music you want to hear. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm always listening to Jazz, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, um, you know, um, Kansas. All of us. All of, like, we, we all basically got the same ear, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we love jazz music. We love tapping into the Rock Kims, the Cool Gs, the, the Cages, you know what I'm saying? The M&Ms, you know what I'm saying? The Atmospheres, you know, the Big Daddy Kings. We love that, you know what I'm saying? So that's what inspires us and motivates us. And besides rapping with two of the illest dudes ever, you know, those are my influences too, you know. They they keep me sharp, you know what I'm saying? Hobby keeps me sharp. Ja keeps me sharp, you know what I'm saying? So I study them dudes like I study Cool G and Rock Kim, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Like for sure. Let's let's start at the top of the year. I, I want to start at the top of the year and work our way down as you as you guys have released. Um, but I, I'll kind of start with you, Javi, as you kind of set the year off in terms of your project. Now, I'll give you a little bit of me as I was listening to it. So it was heavy for me at first. I had to come back, and, and I'll, I'll admit that. And the reason being is, like, I think you got to be in a certain type of mood to receive what what you were saying, because it, it was a lot, you know what I mean? And I just felt like I couldn't listen to it right away or whatever I was listening to. It just happens to be whatever mood you in. But when I actually got into it and, and uh, listened to it, I was like, yo, this is a, a different type of pain somebody's um, displaying on, on these records, man. And you were like bluntly honest in the things that you went through. What made you finally get to that point in life to where you were able to share your story? Um, It started when I was really young, like around 16, I was releasing music on SoundCloud. And back then I was really into like shock value rap. You know what I mean? Horrorcore and things of that nature. Just trying to shock the audience with, somewhat real shit but then i realized once i started releasing more personal tracks and tracks that told my story less than the shock value and trying to be the illest those are the ones that blew up the most you know what i mean back then on soundcloud i released a horrorcore song 200 views at most after a year and i remember one week i released one of my most personal songs and that shit got like 1500 in one day and that was like a lot back then you know what i mean so that showed me it's like, okay, people want my story more than just prove you the craziest rapper. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And who who else to better tell your story than you? And and it could stand the test of time too. When when you're true to yourself, I think um it's like I said, it's the road less travel. It's not going for the the trendy rapper right away. But I think the careers are made on being relatable and being honest. Well, what do you guys think about that? Yeah. Um I think honestly, that's that's our biggest like selling point. This shit is so relatable, no matter how we tell a story. I feel like we all tell a similar story if you really listen to our music. It's all a certain type of pain, you know. We're not like niggas from the streets. We've been around them, we grew around them, but a lot of our pain is more like internal or like external. The shit we see. So you know what I'm saying? KJ talk about it in a way. You, you know, black exploitations were literally that. That's literally what those movies were for. I talk about it in a way, you know what I'm saying? Where I, you know, talk on science and different things and stuff like that. And how we talk about it in a way. It's just, we're trying to show people it's three perspectives. And it's even more than that when it comes to one thing a person will go through in life. Take it like that serious and put every thought into every line that way, you know? Yeah. And um, I, I think that you guys do complement each other uh, pretty well. Like, I would say like how you described it about the uh, the versatility of you job being able to tap into different pains. Like it was is one song and I wish I had wrote it down. That was kind of near the the end of your your project, your current project uh, called Black Sun Zoo for all of you guys out there that haven't heard it. I think is uh, Indigenous Winds is one of the one of the songs that um that I rock with a lot. And it was I, don't, I won't say you haven't opened up in your music before because you've touched on on things but it may have been just you, you, you know how you do your thing. You, you get the revving up and, and rapping and, and going in on certain beats. And it, it's kind of more you saying some shit, but it's not the just, I don't know you easing into it. If I could describe it that way. But, um, and indigenous winds was one of those beats that was a little bit more slowed down and you got to kind of tap into another area. I felt like I haven't necessarily heard you tap into. Is that something that you plan on doing a lot more? Or you feel like you just you do it already. Talk to the soul of a 
ever felt like a failure and the shame don't stop And every time you make a way it's like the road gets blocked yeah. Sometimes the gold is in the rubbish under plain old rocks And one day's on stock Pesos to take old blocks Will I forever plummet from above it to everlasting dungeons In the devil's clutches with the smell of flesh burn redundant But now I'm working at the matinee Seeing talent at display Hoping that my artery that part of thing so. What happens when the same adults that used to give you guidance Tell you ask it lost and what you thought was love is really dying huh? Crazy cause the ones you trust be the most defiant Still my greatest blessings were always dressed in the best disguises wow. Sky's the limit is it yeah. For my potential I could dwindle physics okay. And turn the desert to a little blizzard yeah. I'm thankful for my wife She's the better half of me And with all my blemishes she seemed to care to act in me Something's calling to this path for sounds and all yeah, I feel like Sun, Sun Tzu was that album where I took a little bit more leap into my own pain. I think what I do now, I talk about a lot of things I go through from a lot of metaphor levels, so people don't always catch it as, oh, it's what he's going through. But I think it was a couple tracks on the album, not everyone, of course, but like tracks like Nile of Emotion, um, Indigenous Wings, like you said, the outro, Stranded in the Shrine, where I kind of touched on some of those ills. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, definitely in the future, I want to get better with it because I feel like I'm rapping with one of the illest people to ever explain emotion, ever. You know what I mean? This nigga, I hear his records and damn near be brought to tears on some shit because of how beautifully written and how he can express himself that way. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Yeah, I, could, I mean, listening to 111 is like I could almost hear you you at certain points break down in the song, in song. Did did that happen while you record recording? Like you actually broke down? Yeah, definitely. A lot of tears were shed during them sessions, and I kind of just pushed through it mid recording. It gave it the edge. You know what I'm saying? Okay. How right. how involved are you guys in each other's projects? Are you like just every verse, every song? Like what? Like how how deep do you? Like how does it get? One of y'all didn't. So no, we just we just we're talking about this man. Very involved, bro. Like he got he got hands on my joint, got hands on his joint. You know, it's it's a group project every album. His album is my album. It's my album. <laughs> it's yeah. like that. It's a lot yeah. of like, bro. We have study sessions where we might not even rap. We just sending each other information. Yo, add a line like that. Yeah. Do some shit like that. Yeah. Like it's it's crazy, bro. It's like our own cinematic Marvel yeah. universe. And you'll catch on to it the more when you listen to the albums. How we kind of throw jabs at each other and yeah. try to create that law for somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of got that, man, because I was just, like, the, the theme that's consistent is it is cinematic. Uh, it's just different stories, you know, and it, it's you guys' story. You know, I mean, the the Black Caesar flip on the cover, KJ, was that was pretty dope, man. Like, that that idea. I, I'm sure it, it came from all of you guys in terms of just what to do with that, man. So... Um, kind of going into to your project, KJ, man, with the with the second drop around May, June time frame, right? If I'm not mistaken. That's about, uh, about, uh, talking about the one I just dropped. Yeah, yeah. About, just... about August. About August. August, okay, okay. All right, so wait a minute. So it was Ja that came before before your joint, or was? Ja dropped Sun Tzu in August 1st. Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. All right, Follow so up. I... Go ahead. No, I just I followed up with Incognito right after Sun Tzu. Got you. So I got it. I got it backwards then. So, um, but we'll we'll stay we'll stay there. We'll stay there with Incognito, uh, man. Um, in terms of, um, walk, what were what were you aiming for with Black Incognito? Oh man, with Incognito, man, what I really wanted to do, man, I wanted to one, I wanted to create my own black exploitation album. That was the main goal. Cause I, like all I was doing that whole summer was watching binge watching black black exploitation films, watching documentaries on black culture, the watch prophets, uh, you know, just um, different events that happened on throughout the seventies. You know, I'm really tapped. In. I grew up on a lot of seventies music, so you know that's that's an era I tend to um, gravitate to. So I figured, what better not idea to do than make a black exploitation album? If you heard verbal art, a lot of those beats were very. Very cinematic, jazzy, and funky. Rap Creek Park, Rap the Unique, Mongo Slay. That was a homage to Let's Do It Again. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if you hit that Mongo Slay, then you go into Silent Threat. It's a crazy transition. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what I wanted to do, I wanted to just pay homage to Black culture. You know what I'm talking about? Like I said, the Wise Prophets, Cool Hurt, um, Gil Scott Heron. You see, I got I sprinkled little bits of different 
things that were going on through that seventies time, but I still wanted to um, express myself what I was going through during that time, you know, as a black man, you know, in today's world, society and things I see in my um, community and the people that I, I deal with every day, you know? Hey, um, I said, who am I? I'm the truth to find in a new disguise. The proof is I know suit and tie. Make amends with my truest ties. Cause school the blind, but losing my hope. See through the bluest skies. I'm soon to rise, consuming the smoke. But every ruler dies. When you survive through all the growth, that's when the rules apply. Rules of mine, that's all that you know. It's time to crucify. You screwing eyes on all of my folk. I guess it's do or die. The future lies in all of these quotes. So lose your foolish pride. Learn the game of life. Then play it right if you shake the dice. Them haters tight. Cause they got left. But they don't make it right. We don't think of life. I think Think it twice before I take advice. I'm my enemy's worst nightmare. Tell him say goodnight. goodnight. I put my heart in this shit. I never take it light and take it slide. I stayed up nights nice, trying to go get my patience right. See, now I'm thinking right. I'm painting, painting pictures, but this game's suspicious. Fame of riches bound to blow my name up quite strong. A quiet dude like that spider fool when he flies. Sure, for sure. Kind of staying there and, and with the homage piece, uh, you know, I, I've, you know, scoured you guys' social media. Um, Super happy for you guys, and just in terms of uh, this past summer opening up for for Rock Kim, and y'all y'all doing the silent work, y'all doing the work behind the scenes is is which I which what I love, man. I, I you know there's a lot of people online and, and doing the social media thing heavy, and you guys have a presence there, but you're not there every day. Um, just based on the different guys that I interview, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I like when y'all moving in silence. How was opening up for the guy Rock Kim, man, or, or just Grace in the same stage he graced, man. How how was that? Uh, bro, I think we all gotta get a little piece of this one. Like, word, that shit was unreal, it's unreal, man. And at one point of the set, he started. I didn't even know he could do the turntables. Oh God, this nigga started scratching. <laughs> 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 started scratching. <laughs> I said, Nah, this <laughs> I um I moved it moved the crowd yeah yo, crowd. Shit, yo. yo. and we kind of bro like that yeah fan I mean, it had a fan out moment word, yeah. word. <laughs> we, the crazy part the story of the performance was ill but it was that part of the show that was like God damn. didn't even know he could do that you didn't know no, that. I thought it was Eric B this whole time <laughs> but um as far as us on stage yo it was it was crazy God like we got there. We was chilling for a minute. We had a, our own fans like kind of run up to us. Why you be at me in Florida? They ran up like three, four of them. Yo, we came out here just for y'all. We seen y'all on the flyer. Signed their vinyls, took pictures of them. We got on stage. And to us, because this is our first time performing with real monitors and mics, we like, damn, bro, did we do bad. Like, I feel like I couldn't hear myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I felt like weird. We got off the stage, bro. We couldn't get back to our merch table. Like, niggas was just, yo, who are y'all? Who are y'all? Who are y'all? Right, right. And then we ended up selling a lot of merch that night, too. Yo. So it was it was great. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Fire, fire. That's dope, man. Um, Before we get into where y'all at right now and, and what y'all about to do, because that, that was a surprise to me, man. But I, like I said, I guess we'll find out when we see the footage, right, uh, of what y'all <laughs> actually doing. Um, But, yeah, man, uh, also – I seen some pictures with Kooji Rap, Diamond D, um, coming across some of those guys. I'm sure it's other people that you guys have come across that you probably haven't even posted, just soaking in the moment. How how was it talking to those legends, man, and, and getting their their seal of approval for what you do right now? And you know, um, you know, first off, man, start with Diamond D, man. You know, just knowing his importance and his culture and what he did, just getting a little love from him, man, that, that meant a lot to me as a student, you know. So you know, respect the Diamond D shout out. Um, and then, you know, Cool G, that's that's one of my dudes. You know, that's one of my biggest influences. So even that little 10 minutes we chopped it up, he was putting me on game a little bit. Uh, that meant a lot to me, you know what I'm saying? Because I, like I said, he, um, I I gave him a vinyl. He was basically telling me, like, yo, I'm going to check you out. Because ODB did the same thing to me back in 92 and 95. And he blew up. He said, I see mad potential in you like, like that. So he said, I'm going to definitely check you out. Crazy story, you know what I'm saying? And that that's coming from like one of the dudes that made me want to pick up that pen and write. Hmm. You know? Beautiful, beautiful, man. What's what's some of the the craziest uh you know DMs from anybody that you kind of wouldn't expect to get a DM from in terms of guys that you kind of looked up to and or or peers that you 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 look up to in the game right now? It's a, it's a 
Three cats. Three cats. Oh. I mean, I don't know. I think this game is weird because it's like it's people who's known in whatever realm you at. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, yo, maybe not many people have heard of this person, but we know where we're at and the scene we're in, they make an impact. Right. So when you get them type of messages, it's just like word. Yeah. Those people, it's different. Yeah. I feel like we at a stage right now where uh, it's a lot of different eyes, whether underground or maybe somewhere even, you know, in the actual industry. So it's like, any day we kind of run into some crazy shit. Right. right now we've been meeting idols, we've been like getting on these different stages, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. I think we might have a story or two for you maybe in a month with like somebody who's really out there, the public figure hit us up. It's close. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. All right. I want to talk a little bit about um just growth in you guys' is uh projects because I've, I've caught on all you guys probably within the last two years um i know you guys have been dropping music before that but just you just relatively got on my my personal radar in the last two years kind of subsequently while we've been doing this podcast and, and just trying to really give back that's that's our way you know what i mean as far as just doing our thing so when we came across you guys of course things change from you know project to project so um, I'll let each one of you guys go in terms of where where do you see your growth from the the last time you dropped to kind of right now where you guys are in terms of doing the shows with the Rock Hymns and and then we'll kind of reveal where you guys are right now and who you're about to open up for at the moment. Okay, so just overall growth as artists. Yeah, just overall growth from project to project. You know, uh, anything that's changed your your writing, how you write, you know, how you approach things, things of that I nature. Thing, man, you know, you know, when I first dropped Verbal Heart, you know, solid project, you know, writing was crazy, you know, the, you know, the how they put the, the tracks, all that was was a perfect. But I feel like each project, you know, I I became a better artist because my awareness got better. It's a lot sharper. The way I looked at how I was writing, you know, what I'm saying like what goes where, placements of songs, um, delivery, you know, always got sharper. Studying these dudes, you know what I'm saying. Like just seeing like what Ja does, Javi, the emotion, you know what I'm saying? Ja, how he, he how he uh delivers, you know. So that's things like that. I feel like um I think I could speak for them all. Like we just every project we try to work on trying to become a better artist, you know. Level up. For sure. Word. So I feel like with my projects and the personal growth that I've seen in between them is I'm learning how to get my point across without being so um, jarring, you know what I mean? And I'm also learning how to be very technical, you know what I mean? But still get my message across because I feel like at times I would have to sacrifice one or the other. So yeah, that's where I'm at personally with it. I feel like my penmanship has just been excellent since I've been kicking it with them. Hey, so before um, we get into where you guys are, I just want to um, just ask one more question before we get into that. In terms of, um, you know, Posse Cuts, I think you guys dropped one of, um, and, and KJ and uh, and Ja, one of the dopest Posse Cuts um, with, with some of the guys that I respect as well, JR and, and King James for this year. Like, that, that's still in my, my rotation. I keep a little Posse Cut. Uh, thing or you with two or more people like I just keep that on in the tuck just when I just want to hear some rap. Um, how how was that collaboration and and do you guys plan on you know collabing more? I know I saw one with uh, Vega uh, as well, um, a collab that you did, Josh. So I was collabing with those dudes and and do, are you guys planning on doing that a little bit more? Oh yeah, man, that, uh, you know definitely, man. Those dudes, I think that's one of the illest four minute, four minute tracks that exists. Like I told Jai every day, like, bro, man, this shit is crazy, bro. This track is ill. I feel like every everybody, you know, held their own part down. You know what I'm saying? Like um, King James, did we do? J.I. came right after him. Did what he did? J.I. came and did we had to do? I just ended it off, you know. So yeah, I think um in the future we definitely looking to do more. Yeah. I think we we're trying to get off. Uh, get out of our head as far as wanting to be a perfectionist with every rhyme. Right now, we in that stage. And now we we seeing like the growth of how many people tap out and want to do this or send a beat or want a, a feature. So we like 
now we, we got to tap into some of that. You know, if we feel like it's worth it yet, but we we just not trying to water down the brand either. Right. Yeah, I feel you. And and I like I said, I can respect it. I, I peep it with the social media. Um, be there, be aware, but not you gotta have some some bit of a lore to you, you know, some bit of some bit of privacy. And and I can respect that. I, I struggle with that as well, as far as just being on social media. It's it's you know, if you use it correctly, I think it, it's a powerful tool, but I also don't think you gotta let it control everything you do, because how else are you gonna get the work done? I mean, you gotta be in the studio, you gotta write. I mean, you know, so it is what it is with that, man. But um, without further ado, man, wh- where are you guys right now? Well, what are you what are you guys preparing for right now as we speak? Well, basically, son, we got to Miami yesterday and, you know, I got tagged in a in a post and I, I was getting these a lot of DMs, people telling me about TikTok. And I, I had one of my old records I made since I was 18 year old since I was 18, go viral. You know what I mean? On TikTok and shit. And I went from like, I think 4,000 some followers in a day to like 6,000 going on like 7,000 followers now. So that shit been bubbling crazy. And we just been with that, trying to figure out how to monetize and and do whatever. You know, I, I signed my first management deal too. So now I'm told Congratulations. To I'm trying to just figure out how to like, make this shit something because we done tapped into a whole new audience and all these kids are young kids who want to hear like the next Joey Badass or MF Doom. So it's, it's fucking lined up beautifully. Um, I'll let y'all tell the rest though. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay, say that. Yeah, yo. And we also out in Miami because we opening up Conway this mm-hmm. Saturday. So we hype for that. We got a grace the stage with another legend. Mm-hmm. Crowd about to go fucking crazy. I already know. Yeah. It's gonna be another performance killer. Yeah. Got a divine crew. Oh, yeah. sure. How did that come about? It's just it's the new management, I, I suppose, you know, uh, putting you in places you need to be. Um, yeah, yeah. He um there's this dude named Coach the God. You know what I mean? He's really a genuine dude. He met us back when the uh the first supply, not the first, but the second supply and demand show. It's like an underground show where a lot of, you know, everybody who somebody come to. And uh, he was showing us love. He was like, I fuck with y'all. I like what y'all do. But nothing happened there. A couple months go by, me and Javi drop a video that kind of went semi, you know, virus. It got a lot of likes. You know what I'm saying? And it went crazy in our area, in our hometown. Um, he reached back out like, yo, I got to do work with y'all. I got to, I got to like experiment because I feel like y'all the future. You know what I mean? Sure, for sure. So, KJ, you say you listen to a lot of jazz. Um, ja, Javi, what, what are y'all listening to outside of yourselves and just just um, just um music in general, you know what I mean, that people wouldn't think that y'all actually rock with? I mean, shit. I listen to a lot of, like, old school Asian music. You know what I mean? And I also like to dive into, like, a lot of psychedelic rock, old school rock, like Pink Floyd. King Crimson, you know what I'm saying? Jimi Hendrix. Or, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, or, I think um, I'm into a lot of jazz music, bro. I mean, we built we built in our whole sound off of like just pure yeah. jazz shit that we've been, been into. So Delonious Monk, Sun Ra, you know, Miles Davis, Art Blakely, Bill Evans, you know, all that shit. Uh, I'm into that, bro. A lot of psychedelic rock too. My favorite band up is Black Sabbath. Um, and yeah, bro, it's, I'm really into anything that's good. We do a lot of sampling in our music, so we into like some Egyptian music here, Asian music there, uh, and Brazilian jazz, dance, and music. Oh like we fuck with everything, bro. As Yo, long as- check out check out some Korean R and B, man. I, I just flipped some shit on on the NPC to some Korean R. Art- Insane, man. Tap tap into that. Um, yo, I was ashamed of myself, yeah. I'm I'm preparing, right? I'm, I'm I'm doing my notes and everything, and then I get down to the end of the credits, and it's like fully produced by me, except oh, for yeah. one or two tracks. So I'm like, oh man, I like I gotta listen to this shit again. You know what I mean? Just to kind of to hear where your production's at. I'm like, nah, not he's not rapping. 
this well and and doing the production. Uh, I, I could clearly see that you got the skits and stuff just from our previous interactions and um and stuff like that. I could see you very detailed. Or what what are some of the other talents that you guys got, man? Because I'm I'm maybe I was just I was just, maybe I was tweaking, man. I wasn't paying attention, but. <laughs> He produced the whole 111 by himself, too. Yeah, right out. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that whole shit by himself. <laughs> like, no two beats left off. Nah. Well, yo, why y'all, yo, why y'all not beating your chest on, banging on the table? Like, what was... Yo, um, we like it. So, like, when people find out and they're just like, oh, shit, y'all produce like, what? What? Yeah, we we did that shit. shit. <laughs> Okay, okay. Shit, then we can get into the nerve shit because I, I don't even I don't wanna mess my camera up, but then we can get into it. I mean, what are what are y'all using? What what's the what's the progress? What's what's your go to stuff? Are you you in um logic? What are you using? Logic, I mean uh Pro Tools, NPC, I mean you, you name it. We can get into that. Word, we the best of both worlds, feel me? I got Logic Pro X, he uses FL Studios. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Logic Pro X. Word. Yeah, I mean, right now, our shit is so... And the crazy part about it is it's very minimalistic. It's just we know how to arrange sounds and chop up samples to make them something new. Mm -hmm. Like, we still haven't even gotten into mastering drumming yet. So that's why we also don't talk about it because out of respect to the gods and the legends who really do this, it's like, you know, we still at a very novice level. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's that too. But we feel like we make some of the best of that type of shit ever, though. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yo, I, I get it. I hear what you're saying, right? So <laughs> here, here's my story. Here's my story, man. So uh, <laughs> she right around the time we did the interview, I bought the NPC. Like, I, I've always told myself, like, if I do get back into music and just kind of start doing shit again, I'm going to do it, right? And I'm going to fuck with the NPC and I'm going to fuck with the production and mixing. And weirdly enough, mixing became the thing that I'm falling in love with the sounds and shit like that. So it took a whole whole year, but I'm starting to realize I'm a little bit better than I thought I was. So I'm starting to put it out there. You know what I mean? People don't know I do that. You know what I mean? But that's a whole nother angle y'all could tap into. You know, you start producing for other dope artists like yourselves and y'all already building each other's catalog. Like that's just gonna, that's just gonna expand you guys, even your sound even wider, man. Like don't keep that shit to yourself, man. That's just me. That's just me. Nah, that's that's an ill way to look at that, though. I ain't gonna hold you. Expand your sound and have other people kind of, you know, yep. Yeah. For sure, man. But yo, man, um, I want to end off, Um, you know, uh, you guys are MCs, and I, you know, I can't end this off without asking about some of your favorite MCs um, who've inspired you guys. So... Your five is it should be locked and loaded. This should be easy. Feel free to explain why. Anybody can go and start, and then I'll let you guys out of here. All right. I'm gonna say Andre three thousand, Black Thought, um, old school Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, and. I'm gonna have to say Nas. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fearless. Fearless. Not mad at that. Not mad at that. KJ, what about your your five? I'll say my five, man. It's hard. So I'm gonna just go with Nas. I'm gonna go with Cool Z Rap. I'm gonna go with um. I'm gonna go with uh Big Daddy King. I'm gonna go with Scarface. And then I'm gonna end it up. Man, I'm gonna end it up. I'm gonna say. Uh, Ran, ransom. Mm, yeah, this last, this last, this run he been on the last two years been uh, been waking a lot of folks up, a lot of folks up, and I know you also had a ran feature here within the last year or so as well, right? Yep. I was on the track with uh, Elzai Ran. Elzai Ran. Five, yeah. five. I'm gonna go uh, Nas, Black Thought, MF Doom, J Electronica, and Cool G Rap. Ooh, J Elect. J Elect. We've had a lot of arguments on the podcast about J Elect and that, that collab album. But I'll, I'll let you have it, man. I'll let, I'll let, let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, yeah. Whole whole 45 minutes of us debating about whether it's a per, it's a solo or a collab album. It's, 
ridiculous, oh. ridiculousness, ridiculousness. But it is a dope album. Like you can't, I can't even be mad at it. It's just you know going tip for tap, man. Um, I know that I said know, that was. Go ahead. I know Jay Elect is a crazy name for most because of the catalog, uh, you know, deficiency or whatever you want to call it. But like, I just feel like he did some of the illest shit ever. You know what I mean? With his pen, he did stuff that like it's so crazy it don't really matter, bro. His his one exhibit C exhibit A fucked up your whole twelve catalog out. Crazy. <laughs> 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 I'm a young nigga in the fifth generation. I don't know. Hey, man, we yo we, we I, I yeah I, I don't have a whole hour here. I don't have a whole hour here to keep on going because I could, I could keep going as to why I like J Elect, but I need more. But I mean. He got he got plenty of stuff, um, you know, prior to to dropping that project though. Like if you know, you know, you you tapped into, um, the mixes and stuff like that. So he had plenty of work. It's just rather you put it together, and and listen to it as a you know cohesive body of work. So I never doubt his pen is just you know, it's rising to the top so quickly. It's just nah. It's kind of like the three stacks, and not a not a solo album. I ain't taking a shot at you, Javi, but I'm mad at that. I'm, I'm more mad as a fan. It has nothing to do with Dre. It has nothing to do with Dre. But um, uh, before I let you guys go, since we did get into the production piece of it, um, <laughs> since we did get into the production piece, we'll we'll do the same thing with, with some of the influential producers that inspire your sound now. All right, so... My, I think what influences my son, I'll say, uh, it's fair to say, you know, Alchemist, you know, Alchemist, of course, um, you know, I'm a, and a lot of, you know, listen to a lot of Barry White, those sounds, um, um, I'm gonna I'm say Mad Lib, very, very musical producer, um, Isaac Hayes, just the sounds he used in his, um, and you know, I love, I love, um, I love Marcy's production. Interesting, Marcy, Mar- Rock Marcy's part production. Yeah. Okay. I'm a- okay. I'm not. I'm not mad at it. Uh, but uh, the reason why I'm like okay is because I was just uh, on a post and they were doing the whole drum list and and, and drums debate, and Rock Marcy's name kept coming up in it. And uh, yeah, we went down a rabbit hole on that one on that debate on whether you know. The boom bap thing, but whatever. You know, if it's dope, it's dope for me. Uh, I I rock with you. I'm going to have to go Mad Lib, Jay Dilla. Um, Damn. That's fun. Yeah, that's um, why I wanted to go last. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna say a name I don't even really mean. Fuck it. Um, Primo. Uh, I forgot Primo. Shit. Yeah, you know I'm I'm stuck, man. Yeah. All right. All right, Javi, bring bring us home, man. Uh, all right, I think for me, I'm gonna have to say Jay Dilla and Mad Lib like him, and I'm gonna have to do Flying Lotus, uh, Alchemist, and uh, No ID. Oof. No ID. That's good. No ID. I think he's very. Okay. All right. All right. Now I'll end it all for me. Danger Mouse is up there. Yeah. Yeah. Danger Mouse. Okay. Danger Mouse is dope. Danger Mouse is dope. All right, fellas, man. Like I said, man, Um, you know, Congratulations to you guys on, on what you've accomplished in 2022. That's nothing to, to sneeze at, man. Uh, you know, don't be proud of yourselves, man. Continue to uh, excel, man. I'm 
encouraged, proud of you guys in, in terms of, you know, where hip hop is heading and, and, and where it's at right now currently with you guys doing it, man. So, um, like I said, man, we here on, you know, Don't Sleep on the Couch. We're rooting for you guys to continue to excel and, and, and be on those big stages uh, because you guys are earning it, man. So, um, so you know, blessings to you guys, man. Um, go kill that 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 show, man. Go make those connections, man, and uh, and, and you know, and rock out, man. That that's what I got, man. So, uh, before I let you guys go, can you let people know um, where they could find Divine Records and you guys individually? Um, yeah, man. You can um, find me Rome to Riches R O M E R seven H E S on Instagram. That's Rome to Riches, and then on uh, Twitter. Special K underscore eleven J. Um, you will find me on Instagram at Ja King. Well, Instagram and Twitter, Ja King the Divine, J A K I N G, T E D I V I N E. Um, and you know the music is on all platforms. Anyway. Yeah, so you can find my music on all platforms, like they said. And my social media, the handles are the same for all my social medias, Instagram, Twitter. So that's J-A-V-I-D-A-R-K-O, Javi Darko. Nice, nice. All right, fellas, like I said, man, um, it's been good talking to you guys, man. Can't wait to, uh, you know, see what you guys have next, what's in store next for you guys in terms of, of a project. Hopefully it's a group project. You never know putting that out in the air. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully here in the near, very near future, man. So uh, with that said, man, this is ep- <laughs> this is episode 184 of Don't Sleep on the Couch podcast. Y'all go check out Divine Records. Go check out all of their solo works and go check out some of the features, man. These guys, these guys are dope, man. And um, they right now and they got next. So y'all check them out. Peace. Life ain't real. Look around the room and all I see is eyes. Seeing my hand pixelate, feeling the sea and lies from my whole lifetime. Last 20 years of my existence, I've been abusing myself for my addictions. Cross the other side and I'm trying to go back. I learned that when you die, your life doesn't go black. It's a never ending swarm of sacred geometric patterns. My soul leaving my body, tears flowing while I'm laughing. Words can't describe my experience. The moment that you die is when you're feeling this. So dive into the images. Is it drug use? Use of mine experiments, transcendental meditation, lifting me beyond all the simple shit. I feel a shift in my energy, something telling me to leave my physical form and disperse in the energy. Until then, making music is the remedy for self-destructive habits and suicidal tendencies. Biggest enemy, the man in my reflection. Bipolar, schizophrenic, manic, and depressive. Lately, psychedelic therapy, my obsession. Open my mind and realize that life is like inception. Any thought I think in my head, I can manifest it. The greatest lesson I heard is learning and changing perception so i guess psychoactive drugs what i'm ingesting taking trips in my mind while trying to find a message 111 111 taking trips in my mind while trying to find a message 111 111